ZBrush is the king of sculpting. Every major AAA studio uses it to some degree. But the thing is, if you look at the licenses, whoa! $800 for perpetual license? That's a little expensive, huh? What if I tell you that there is a free online sculpting tool out there right now that has every feature you need to get started with 3D sculpting? And it's called Sculpt GL. So hold up there, ZBrush Cowboys. I know what you're thinking before you try to crucify me in the comments. I ain't saying that this is an alternative to ZBrush. I'm just saying this is a pretty cool website and a pretty powerful sculpting tool you should know about. And did I mention that it works on every computer that I've tried it on and your phone? Heck, I even tried it on my grandma's old laptop and it worked. So come on. That's got to do something for you. So my goal for this video is not only to show you this website, but also to sculpt a human head with it so that I, you can kind of see what it's good for and what its strengths and weaknesses are and also what you can use it for. And yeah, let's, let's do this. So let's get the basics out of the way. We have three tabs over here. We got the rendering, topology and sculpting and painting. So. Under rendering, I'm quickly going to change the matte cap, which I can do under here, to the basic gray one, because that's the one I'm used to and that I usually use in my other 3D softwares. You also have the option by clicking this button to import your own matte caps, if you are fancy like that. You even can bring in the old, ancient, legendary ZBrush red clay material. Not gonna use that today because I think it's quite quite ugly. Yeah. So back to our gray good old safe zone mat cap. So next up topology, we have different subdivision levels over here. Then we got two remesh options. The first one is for triangles, the second one is for quads. So pretty powerful stuff. Resolution sliders, everything's here. So now Finally, we're getting to the fun stuff, and this, this, of course, the brushes. You got everything you ever wanted. You got your builder brush, your inflate, your twist brush, your flatten brush, your pinch brush, your crease, your drag and move brush. And something that's also pretty cool is you have the option down here to import your own alphas, which we're definitely going to do, but uh, yeah, a little bit later. Uh, here, over here, you got your basic uh, sliders like re brush radius and intensity. They also have shortcuts on your keyboard. Uh, X is your brush size, which you will use quite regularly. And C is the intensity, which I don't often touch that much. I usually leave it like around 50. Let's start uh, modeling something. As I said, I want to make a human head. I also will turn off this grid and we finally can uh, start the process here. First, we use the basic drag brush to just get an overall shape here, right? Just want to get a little bit more human-ish features because this is actually the most important stage of the sculpt. As you know, everything in art goes from rough shape to small detail. If you don't do that, then you will encounter some problems later down the road. So I'm quite nervous. I usually can do my basic human head if I, if I did my warm up. But when I record, I, I tell you, if you try this, ever try making a tutorial, you lose like 50% of your skill. If your ability is just gone if you start recording. <laughs> but no worries, we will be all smart in the end, even if we fail here a little bit. Extruding the nose here with the move brush, also trying to get the, the cheeks right. Now it looks like Odo from Star Trek Deep Space Nine, but I think Odo is a pretty good base mesh. If you start with Odo, you're on the right track. 
and I'm going to make his eyes closed because that's a lot easier to do and I yeah just want to make it quick so and I'm going to do my first remesh put it about 160 and hit remesh let's try to get and dig in a little bit more here on the eyes and then add it back in so that the eyeball would kind of extrude outward oh messed up the nose again the nose is so delicate by when you're doing this this modeling stuff you always have to touch the nose as little as possible it's so like pretty delicate the nose is pretty important feature of the face then we have to fix our nose from the side Need to brush a little bit bigger and just move it and tuck this little piece of flesh a little bit under there yeah that's quite a pointy nose to tone it down a little bit yeah that looks that looks more like it i'm going to exaggerate the nostrils a little bit and then smooth it out with uh by the way shift is smooth that's also uh, a brush that's totally necessary and that you will need a lot especially at this uh these beginning stages where you really have to focus on the basic shapes i'm going to make the other features now like the mouth with the crease brush just I can indentation here where it should start and then we're gonna make the eye lids separate right here now build up the face muscles around his his mouth basically because the mouth is just a, a ring of muscle that's supported by muscles so there's a lot going on here. I notice now that his eyes are a little bit too close together. Um, the tear dots here um, usually should line up with the nostrils. That is a, a, a good rule to keep in mind. Let's give him some cheekbones. Let's move him out a little bit. And yeah, let's move his temples also. Now we're going to use a, a feature that I didn't believe was possible in the browser just because I, I think it's so strange to have like this separate level of complexity that you can have with the mask brush. Yeah, I'm talking about the mask brush, by the way. And yeah, this is all the same like in ZBrush. It's like somebody took ZBrush, ripped it out and Put it in your browser and yeah it's really awesome even if i click now um here it inverts it just like in zbrush then i can go to my to my drag brush make it really big and pull out his his neck here and just adjust it like so okay now let's do a, a remesh boom that's done just like this and then use the build up to just give him a little bit more of a realistic and smoother transition oh he's got a pretty thick neck back here let's bring that down a little by the way i'm not using a graphic tablet right now i'm just using a mouse which works pretty good i would say for for this program but there is a uh, Wacom uh, tablet support. So you can plug in your tablet if you want to have pressure sensitivity on. And now I'm going to try my best uh, making the ears. Just paint an ear in like this. And same story. Just go to the, to the drag brush and pull it out. Invert it, of course. and hit remesh now the ears i usually spend a little bit more time on because they are so complex there's so much detail going on that we have to yeah try a little bit harder here okay so i'm going to fast forward a little bit from now on and finish this refine it a little bit 
and then we're going to try out the drag brush with an alpha mask. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so two hours later, we're here. Uh, I finished sculpting the head and uh, dressed him up a little bit and gave him this helmet, um, but it's blank. And what we're going to do now is we are going to make it look neat and add some details through the use of alpha maps that I was dying to show you. So. Um, in order to do this we have to change to the move brush and now we can uh, import our alpha textures. I have them prepared of course and these are the ones I am going to use and the first one I like to try is this one. Neat so far. Now let's try this other one. Of course it's um, dependent on brush size we have to try to oh yeah that looks okay and um, yeah i want to do that ring also like this to inset it a little bit and yeah i bought these alphas from gumroad i think and the this is a really cool brush bag is like a couple of bucks and they're really a lot of cool hard surface details in there so i will put a link in the description if you want to have them yourself so but now let's get back into doing this this is pretty fun this is like at the end of the model where you can just oh it's a little bit too complex now we have to turn off symmetry for this one okay that's a little bit too big maybe try it maybe try it here Hmm, now I have the problem that I can't quite figure out how to control the orientation of this thing because it seems kind of random. Yeah, it is random. I pull, I'm pulling in the same direction and it's putting it... Oh, now we got something. Yeah, but that doesn't look good. Let's try another one. And of course you have to have a pretty high poly count to do this. This alpha drag. Oh, why is it going? Why is it going crazy? Uh, not good. This ain't good. Try it on here. A little bit bigger. Like that, and we have this detail stomped on there. It looks kind of chaotic right now because I. Unfortunately, I can't figure out how to um, control the orientation. That is a little bit of a disappointment for this method because I thought this would work quite well. The last thing we can do is we can just put in some cut lines with the crease brush. Okay, just like this. Some small details right here add a cut line around this thing and maybe we should do something with this with this uh, alpha here as well maybe just connect it like this and pull this straight down to make uh, connect make connect over here that let's do a little bit more of an inserted way here alrighty this is my sci-fi out pilot guy or oh, we could change the mat cap to the skin one let's take, let's do this and give him like a green shirt. Yeah, that looks alright. Fine, so 
with that i thank you for watching this video if you came so far and yeah if you have done anything with sculpt gl yourself feel free to send it to me on my instagram uh link is in the description i'd like to see what you guys can make with this and yeah happy sculpting and you know what now you don't have any excuses to not sculpt you can do it anywhere now anywhere for free so have fun bye looks kind of like magneto yeah unintentional magneto happening here